welcome to this video where we're going to cover the work that we need to understand for arithmetic sequences. So this is in the series topic in Pure Maths 1 for CIE Maths. Uh, arithmetic sequences are a special kind of sequence um, where the difference between the terms in the sequence is always the same. That's what an arithmetic sequence is. So you can see in this little example here the difference between each term is 3. When we talk about a uh, series, a series is just the sum of a sequence. Okay, Some people get those uh, names confused. So a series is just the sum of the sequence. So what we're going to do is uh, look at some formulas for getting the nth term of a sequence like this and for the sum of n terms of a sequence with a few examples. Okay, so if you look at this uh, little example that I've given you, 5, 8, 11, 14, 17, we call the common difference 3. Okay, we give it the letter D in this case, and say that D is the common difference. We use the letter A to represent the first term, and the letter N to represent the number of terms. So you're going to see formulas here with A, D, and N in them. A the first term, D the common difference, and N the number of terms. Okay. So in general, for the terms of an arithmetic sequence, we've got the first term, the next term is a plus d, the next term is a plus 2d, a plus 3d, a plus 4d, etc, etc. So you can see that in these sequences here, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th term has a plus 4d. The 6th term will have a plus 5d. That leads us to a general formula here. Now this formula is on the formula sheet. un instead of tn is the nth term, a the first term, n the number of terms, and d the common difference. So there's your first formula for the term, working out the term. For the next formula for the sum of an arithmetic sequence, great story back in time, the great mathematician uh, Carl Friedrich Gauss was at school as a very young boy, eight or nine years old, and he was asked to do this sum. Add the numbers from 1 to 100. Now, while everyone in the class got busy with their slates, uh, the teacher settled down at the desk for a, an hour of relaxation while the class worked. Gauss came right up the front of the class, put the slate on the teacher's desk with the correct answer straight away. Here's how he did it. What he realized is that adding the first and last numbers gives you 101, adding the second and the second last number gives you 101, and so on. So he realized that he had 50 lots of 101s, so giving him 5,050. Pretty clever. So this method works for any arithmetic sequence. Here's the formula. The sum of n terms is we take the first term and add the last term, times it by n over 2. So in Gauss's case, n was 100, 100 divided by 2. So here's the formula, the sum of n terms n over 2, so in Gauss's case n was 100, so there's 50 pairs, 100 divided by 2, and a plus l, so 1 plus 100 in his case gives you 101, 50 lots of 101. So that works for any, any one of these, even if you don't have exactly an, an even number of terms. If we replace l, the last term, with the formula for the nth term, which is just a plus n minus 1d, we get this expression. With a little bit of simplifying gives us this expression. So here's another formula for the sum of n terms of an arithmetic sequence. Once again, you don't have to remember it, it's on your formula sheet. So let's do some problems now. Each problem, we've just got to think which formula to use and remember what a, n, and d are and apply them properly. Okay, find the 15th term and the sum of the first 15 terms of this sequence. So I write down what's A, 32, what's D, you can see the common difference here, we're going down by 6 each time, so D is negative 6, and we're talking about the 15th term, so N is 15. So I just substitute those numbers into the first formula, 
the 15th term is negative 52. To find the sum of the first 15 terms, I can use either one of those formulas. The first term is uh, 32. The last term we just worked out is negative 52, and n is 15. Or we could just use this formula here, which doesn't require us to know what the last term is. Substitute the values in carefully. The sum of the first 15 terms is negative 150. This next example asks us to find the sum of the multiples of 4 between 202 and 542. Okay, so let's first identify what the first multiple of 4 after 202 is and the one just before 542. Remembering that uh, the way that you can tell a number is divisible by 4 is that the last digit is divisible by 4, the last two digits. So 204 would be divisible by 4 and 540 would do, be divisible by 4. So really we want to find this sum here, the sum of the numbers from 204 to 540. This is an arithmetic progression. The difference between each term is 4, so D is 4, A is 204, so we've got it. Now one more part of the puzzle that we need here, we need to know how many terms there are. So how many jumps of 4 are there between 540 and 204? You could probably work that out just by subtracting and dividing by 4, but you've just got to be a little bit careful. Uh, so the way I've done it is I've used the formula for the nth term. So the nth term here is 540. First term, 204. n we don't know, and the common difference is 4. Substituting that into the formula, subtracting 204, dividing by 4, and then adding 1, there's 85 terms in that sequence. If you just go 540, subtract 204, and then divide by 4, your calculator gives you 84. So there's 84 jumps in here, but there's actually 85 terms. So just be careful of that if you like to use that other method. Okay, since we have the first and last terms, we can just use that first formula that Gauss gave us. n over 2, so 85 over 2. The first term is 204, the last term is 540. There is the sum of the first uh, or all of the multiples of 4 between 202 and 542. This next example is a common one. We've got the third term and seventh term of an arithmetic progression. It's really good to write out a little diagram like I have here. So 1, 2, third term is 12, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh term is 6. And I want to find the 21st term. Okay, the way I'm going to do that is find what the common difference is and kind of work backwards to find what the first term was. Then I can use the formula. So you can see that I'm adding on D one, two, three, four times to go from 12 to 6. So we've made this jump from 12 to 6, so in other words we've gone down 6 and we've done it in four jumps. That must mean that each one of these jumps is minus one and a half. Okay? We could write this little formula out. 12 plus 4 lots of D is equal to 6. So I've got D. I can then work backwards. Uh, this one here must be 13 and a half because we went down 1 and a half to get 12. So this one here must be 15. So the first term is 15. The common difference is negative 1.5. I can work out what the 21st term is. A plus N minus 1D. The 21st term is negative 15. Another way of doing this is to form two simultaneous equations and solve them. Uh, the third term, 12, is a plus n minus 1d. The seventh term, 6, is a plus n minus 1d. You subtract these two equations, you get 4d equals negative 6, etc. You can go from there, exactly the same as we did above. The last example here is the trickiest one. We've got the 5th and 10th terms. You can see I've drawn them out. 5th and 10th terms of an arithmetic sequence. We want to know the value of n such that the sum of the first n terms is 0. Okay. Right, well, first thing I'm going to do is work out d, which I'll do the same way as I did above. Negative 40 plus 5 lots of d gives me negative 20. So that means d is 4. I'm adding on 4 each time. So I've added 4 on each time from this one here, 1, 2, 3, 4 times to get to negative 40. So that means I must have started at negative 56. So A is negative 56, D is 4. We want the sum of N terms being 0. So it's a matter of thinking of well, what formula am I going to use. 
there's only three. We want the sum of n terms. So I'm going to use that last formula here. We don't know n. I know what a is, and I know what d is. So substituting all the bits that I know gives me this. Expand the brackets carefully inside here. 4 times n minus 1 times 4, 2 times negative 56. Collect the like terms in there, and we end up with this quadratic equation. So um, factorize here, there's a common factor of 2n, so n is 0 or 29. So certainly we don't want zero terms, that's a bit boring. So we must be talking about the 29th term.